But I think capnometry is is um, obnoxiously underutilized in and during our our mechanical ventilation process of our patients. Now, somebody's going to comment and say we use entitled CO two on every single patient, and I love you for that. Thank you so much. But there's a lot of mechanically ventilated patients out there right now that are not using and not implementing entitled CO two to allow us to non invasively monitor our patient's ventilation. And here's the reason we get this the most. When I ask how come we aren't using entitled CO2, the answer is, is well, because arterial and entitled CO2 never correlate. Well, you now know why they don't. Dead space. You see, there's a gradient between the two and we can use that gradient to track arterial CO2. We can also use that gradient to, to indicate to us when dead space problems are increasing or arising. We, we can use it. I, I, I Real quick here, I had a patient one time that was on a mechanical ventilation with entitled CO2, and in a matter of minutes, I literally watched their entitled CO2 go from 40 to 38 to 32 to 28. I looked at the nurse and I said, hey, you may want to cycle that blood pressure cup. And, she, and, and the response was, is, well, I, I just did and it was normal. I said, yeah, but something has changed here because I'm looking at my entitled CO2 and it's dropping rapidly. My mechanical ventilation, my mechanical ventilator parameters had not changed at all. So I knew it wasn't a change in ventilation. I knew it had to be something else. They cycle the blood pressure and it comes back 60 over 30. Recognize it like that because of the utilization of entitled CO2. And that's what makes you an exceptional respiratory therapist versus average. So that's the arterial to entitled CO2 gradient. Remember that you're typically very, very close in value, but when they spread apart, you gotta start thinking increased dead space and what is happening with my patient.